morning. We want to welcome everybody to Totally Tasty Torah. We are here at Best Yeshua, House of the Risen Sun. We are here to be having the privilege of studying this week's parasha, which is Yitro. Yitro. And if Hebrew isn't all that good, you may know him as Jethro. Some of you may have seen him on TV in the 50s and 60s. <laughs> well, Jethro. Anyway, uh, well, we're here, and this is, uh, hey, how are you, brother? All right. Hey, guys. Good right. to see you. Where would you rather have? See that to see you in the restroom. Oh, oh okay. no. All right. Fantastic. We are visited by our friends who are normally visiting us from Wisconsin and are well tanned, I might add. Yeah, Ruben's a little warm, that's for sure. <laughs> Good morning. Hey, how are you? So, our group is filling up here live, but if you're here virtually, we're glad you're with us. And again, uh, we are in this week's parasha, which is called Yitro, which is uh, Exodus 18, 1. And we just want to welcome everybody. It is just a sensation to be able to do this. The, the technology never ceases to amaze me. We're sitting here with people live and in color, and, and uh, we're just thrilled that that all happens. But at the same time, we're joined by people virtually from afar. And some who are afar are here today. <laughs> That's very exciting. Very exciting. Let's turn to Exodus 18, chapter 18. Verse 1 is where we are again. This particular parasha is Yitro, again, Jethro. And this is about his advice. And uh, again, uh, it is understood that Jethro was who? Who was he in relation to the people that were studying? Moses' father-in-law. Moses' father-in-law. Midianite. A Midianite, mm -hmm. precisely. Uh, legend has it that he was once in the palace in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, is that, again, legend is that he took this staff with him when he left Egypt and went to Midian. He became Prince of Midian. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that staff got planted in the ground and nobody could remove that staff from the ground mm -hmm. except one. Moses. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Sword, right? Sword there you go. Sword and the stone. Well, okay. Rabbi. Rabbi. Well, saw, one yeah. second, Libby. I hear that he was the, the first one in in pronounce in pronounce the name Hashem. He was the first one who said Baruch Hashem or praise his name. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right, let's read. Okay. I, I, I wanted to say something. Yeah, yeah, this is just a, a little a little history, but um think about it. Moses was in Midian when he when he met Jethro and then Zipporah. And Midian was not very far from that town where Job was from. And because of that, it's been ascribed. And because Job was um, chronologically before Exodus, it's been ascribed that Moses wrote the book of Job. And it might have been like word of mouth because those towns were near each other. Amen. I, I don't disagree with that. And I think, well, again, it's generally accepted by the by most scholars, that Job was in fact the book, first book that was written. Amen. And it is profound, profound, because in that book, the Lord, I like to say, explained who he is. Okay. And made it very clear. Okay. Do I have a reader? Anybody would like to read this morning? No? Okay. I'll do it. Yes. Nice and loud. Yeah, okay. All right. Chapter 18, Jethro's Advice. Now Jethro, 
the priest of Midian and Moses' <coughs> father-in-law heard about everything God had done for Moses and for his people Israel. And Adonai had brought Israel out of Egypt. Jethro, mother, Moses' father-in-law, had taken in Moses' wife Zipporah after he had sent her away with her two sons. One was named Gersom, right? Because he said, I have been an outsider in a foreign land. And the name of the other was Eliezer, because he said, for my father's God is my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. Great. Okay, thank okay. you. And just as an FYI, again, if you're new to us, uh, we're using what's called the TLV or the Tree of Life version. That's the Bible that most of us have been uh, using. Um, and in particular, because it's a direct translation from the Hebrew, just so you know, if you hear something that's unfamiliar, okay, that's this is the version that we're using. Okay, Sheila, please, let's go on. Five. Uh, verse five. So Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife to Moses into the wilderness where he was encamped at the mountain of God. He had told Moses, I, Jethro, your father-in-law, am coming to you, along with your wife and her two sons. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, then bowed down and kissed him. They asked each other about their welfare and went into the tent. I just can't help but think about it. A message went out to Moses. Moses became aware of the fact that Jethro was coming with his wife and his sons. Moses' wife and sons. Pony Express? I mean, mm -hmm. smoke signals, how did he get that message? You know, wow, you know, there are lots of things I want to ask about. Let's go on. <laughs> okay. Eight. Moses told his father in law all that Adonai had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, as well as all the tra 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 travail that had come upon them along the way, and how Adonai delivered them. Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness that Adonai had shown to Israel, since he had delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Jethro said, Blessed be Adonai. Amen. Stop right there. There it is. Okay. okay, as far as I know. But what's unusual? I mean, first of all, understand Jethro or Yitro is the only parasha. It's named after somebody who was not an Israelite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here he is saying, Amen. So somehow there's a synapse going on, mm -hmm. right? With Yitro. Let's go on. Let's be Adonai, who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh, and has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that Adonai is greater than all gods, mm. since they had acted ar arrogantly against them. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, presented a burnt offering and sacrifices to God. Aaron also came along with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. The next day, Moses sat, sat to judge the people, and they stood around Moses from morning till evening. Okay, just, just as, okay, what did they do? They sat around, sat around him. They, they had own egg. Okay. Watch is transmitted that way. That's why we do what we do after our services. We sit and we talk and we share. And so that's why sometimes when we can meet in small groups, there's a lot of things that are transmitted and communicated that wouldn't necessarily happen in a big meeting. Okay, people share their feelings, okay, and, and they and they we're celebrating what God has did. i done. Amen? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. 14. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did for the people, he said, what's this you're doing to the people? Why sit by yourself alone with all the people standing around from morning until the evening? Moses answered his father-in-law, it's because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have an issue, it comes to me, and I judge between a man and his neighbor, so I make them understand God's statutes and his laws. Okay, so how many people were there? Hmm. A lot. He alone. He alone. Well, how many people were, oh, well, were wandering here in the wilderness? Thousand. Thousand of people. A couple of million. Yes. Yeah. A couple of million. Okay. And here's Moses, one guy, mm -hmm. counseling all of these people. Cases are being brought before him. Mm -hmm. And in his wisdom, Yitro says, you're going to burn yourself out. 
fast. Okay, let's read on. 17. But Moses' father-in-law said to him, What you're doing is no good. You will surely wear yourself out, as well as these people who are with you, because the task is too heavy for you. You cannot do it alone by yourself. Now listen to my voice. I will give you advice, and may God be with you. You... Okay. Again, father-in-law advice. Yeah. <laughs> All right? The father-in-law pointing still to his son-in-law. Listen to me! <laughs> All right, go ahead. You represent the people before God and bring their cases to God. Enlighten them as to the statutes and the laws and show them the way by which they must walk and the work they must do. But you should seek out capable men out of all the people, men who fear God. Okay, listen, please. Men who fear God. Men of truth who hate bribery. Appoint them to be rulers over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Okay, so he's giving the credentials of the people that he needs to seek out to be leaders. Amen. People that he can trust, people who are righteous. Amen. Go on. 22. Let them judge the people all the time. Then let every major case be brought to you, but every minor case they can judge for themselves. Make it easier for yourself as they bear the burden with you. Does this sound familiar? To the whole structure that he just outlined. It's the kind of court system, right? Court system. Without the righteousness part. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. I said that that sentence there about seeking capable men out of mm, men sorry, fear God, men sorry, of truth, men who hate bribery. That is our court system. So we miss court, that sentence you have sometimes. Courts, you have the circuit <laughs> courts, forgive. right? The court of appeals. Okay, the whole thing is broken down, and and the local judges handle cases, and if in fact. If, in fact, uh, it goes awry and the case can't be handled, then they bring it to the Supreme Court. Let's go on. Yeah, okay. all right. Rabbi, we, we, we also see that upgraded in the New Testament, in Acts and in the epistles, where they're telling them how to set up the you know structures within the church, within the congregations. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And again, the Word of God makes it very clear, Evangeline, and outlines it, but sometimes churches design their own system. <laughs> and they say, this is going to be the order of things. Okay. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Okay, it goes awry. And unless we follow the word of God. Oh, God. Amen. Amen. It's just a picture of the body of Messiah working together. Mm -hmm. The ones that did the smaller cases were just as important to carry the burden of Moses. Mm -hmm. Anybody else think of some other example of order in which uh, hasn't happened just yet, but where is it that it's very clear about the God of order? But at uh, one point here is that there, the, the, the main requirement is that they would be filled from the Holy Spirit. These people, yes. But let's think of another incident at another point in time, not too far ahead in the future, where, in fact, he well, says, way, you order what? Let well, me... the way the Lord um, commanded the priests be consecrated and their clothes and how they were to um, purify themselves before going to the Holy of Holies. Okay. All right. Uh, but as I'm... was just mentioned... Uh, a delineation of duties. Does that bring to mind something else? Well, what I'm thinking of is where it says that we will be judging angels. I don't know if that's what that's where you're going. No, I'm thinking of the tabernacle. Okay. okay the tabernacle where the Levites were assigned specific duties. Okay, you handle the tent pegs. You handle the sheep skin, the the, uh, the dolphin skin, where they got dolphin skin, I have no idea, okay? But everybody had, you handle the censors, okay? Everybody else, because as we frequently describe, like battle stations on a, on a warship, everybody has a very specific duty that he has to perform. And when, in fact, the Shekinah glory, translate Shekinah glory, Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord. Cloud by day, pillar of fire, fire by, by night. 
shows up and decides to get up and move, then whew, everybody has to run to their battle stations to their assigned duty. Okay, nobody questioned that. Everybody did that. And if somebody picked up and decided to do something else, they were handled harshly. Okay, you're supposed to do exactly what he told you to do because that was the job of the Levites. Okay, where were we? 23. 23. If you do this thing as God so commands, commands you, then you will be able to endure. And all these people will go to their places in Shalom. So Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. Moses chose capable men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They judged the people all the time, the hard cases they brought to Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. Then Moses, then Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went on his way to his own land. All right, great. All right, so again, uh, nineteen is entitled, subtitled, the Theophany at Sinai. Anybody want to venture a guess at Theophany? A God sighting. God sighting. A visible manifestation. Mm -hmm. Right. Of a, of a deity. Amen. All right. Let's read on. But keep in mind what Sheila just read. They judged all the people all the time. The hard cases they brought to Moses. But every small matter they judged for themselves. Then Moses let his father-in-law depart. And he went his way. Moses tried to convince him to stick around. He said, you're familiar with this territory. I am not. Stick around and be with us. But uh, Yitro decided to return back to Midian. Amen? So I have a question, Rabbi. Yes, eventually. Um, quick question. Um, do we hear anything more about Moses' sons? He he had two sons, but is there anything else written about them after they, the father-in-law brought them back? Um, ooh, that's a good question. Um, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, uh, I yeah. couldn't remember. It's on my list to ask him when I see him. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, we'll get your answer. But, um, yeah, I, I don't remember. Okay. I can't bring to mind any other place, no. I'll okay, thank you. Later. Look it up in my study Bible that my mother got me when I got saved in 89. Okay, John. All right, buddy. Thank you. All right. All right. So again, let's go on to chapter 19, please. Yeah. In the third month after B'nai Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, that same day they arrived at the wilderness of Sinai. They traveled from Rephidim, Ref came, came into to the wilderness of Sinai, and set up camp in the wilderness. Israel camped there right in front of the mountain. Moses went up to God, and Adonai called to him from the mountain, saying, Say this to the house of Jacob, and tell B'nai Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. <clears throat> now, then, if you listen closely to my voice and keep my covenant, then you will be my own treasure from among all people. Okay, big word in there. Real big word. Yeah. What? Yeah. Thank you, John. If. Okay. That is the magic word. If you listen. Yeah. Shema Yisrael. Hear, O Israel. Doesn't just mean hear. It also means okay. obey. Obey. So, mm -hmm. and again, my own treasure. Treasure in Hebrew translates sagula. Because he often refers to Am Sugula, my treasured people. Okay, these are people that I have selected. Why? Because they did everything perfectly, right? Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the first question I'm going to ask. Okay, why us? Or as Tevya said in Fiddler on the Roof, wouldn't you have chosen somebody else? <laughs> I know why. Because you said that Jewish people are a stiff-necked people. And if he can be faithful to them, he can be faithful to us Gentiles. Thank you, God. <laughs> Weren't were the Israelites viewed as the smallest and the weakest? It was really proven a point. Look at yeah. the land of Israel. 
it's like New Jersey. Mm. Okay, I mean, oh, right. size-wise, yeah. look what's going on. And what is he doing? He's protecting you. I'm fascinated by the wilderness I've been studying for the last month, how roughly 4,700 times they moved in those 40 years every three days. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine moving two and a half people organizationally? What mm -hmm. logistics of that? It had to be God. Could have been a human. Moses was good, but not that good. <laughs> <laughs> but again, pressing ahead because we know that once they came and created the tabernacle, and they they were in formation around the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And if you were a drone looking down on this whole thing, what would you see? A cross. I actually yeah. filled it out one day. It's a cross. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just if you follow it. And they yeah, moved in formation, just like a military right. phalanx. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, may I say something? <clears throat> okay. Um, the condition to be, you know, his people, his treasure, is to um, to keep his uh, government. You know, this is the condition. Yeah. Um, but now uh, we find. Thousand of congregation and denomination that they want and they uh, to be they want to be you know the the holy people of God, but they they don't care about the commandments. They don't care about the you know the covenant. Well, the odd thing is, he says, "I'm Segula. You are my treasured people." Okay, and much of humanity looks at this and says okay as a result look around what's going on you see the anti-jewishness of what's going on in the world right now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's why because anti christian in general really, which uh, is the next step of yeah precisely okay so you know, and people and somebody that doesn't really believe we hear this a lot why is that happening he's preparing us right he's mm -hmm. separating us mm -hmm. from you know not him, really. And so it's incumbent through all of this that you stay the course and that you not become part of the apostasy, mm -hmm. the falling away. Mm -hmm. So despite some of the quote-unquote stuff that we see going on around us, you have to press on. Amen? But, but the different point is, even though Israel, you know, they... The Jews people didn't keep the commandments. The Jews don't keep the commandments. Well, you can't say that in general. Okay. In other words, I know, I know, I know. Right. But, but this is the problem right now. That who is keeping his covenant now? The remnant. Thank you. But John is exactly right. Sha'arit Israel, remnant of Israel. Okay, there are a few and we're sitting here. Okay, amongst Amen. many, the remnant of Israel, okay, who are attempting to, to do exactly what he said to do, okay, and but there are those also in the Orthodox communities uh, who are trying to follow it, but they're trying to follow the word, the, uh, the 613 commandments, okay, and I don't know about you, but following every single one of those commandments is difficult at best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only one did that. Yes. Amen? Amen. Let's yeah. read on. Okay, I wanted to complete the uh, five. The, five. Uh, for at the end, it said, for all the earth is mine. Didn't get to say that. Go ahead. Okay, six. <laughs> so as for you, you will be to me a kingdom of Kohanim and a holy nation. Kingdom of priests. Kohanim, go ahead. These are the words which you are to speak to B'nai Israel. So Moses went, called for the elders of the people, and put before them all these words that Adonai had commanded them. All the people answered together and said, everything that Adonai has spoken, we will do. Okay. Time out. What did they say? Everything. Oh, everything. Everything that Adonai has spoken, we will do. Hmm. Let's read on. Then Moses reported the words of the people to Adonai. Adonai said to Moses, I am about to come to you in a thick cloud so that the people will hear when I speak with you and believe you. 
And Moses told the words of the people to Adonai. Adonai said to Moses, go to the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. Let them wash their clothing. Be ready for the third day. For on the third day, Adonai will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Anything significant there? Third day. Third day. Go figure. Praise God. Okay. All right. God is a God of numbers. Go on. Twelve. You are to set boundaries for the people all around, saying, Be very careful not to go up on, onto the mountain or touch the border of it. Whoever touches the mountain will surely be put to death. Not a hand is to touch it, but he will surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it is an animal or a man, it will not live. When the shofar sounds, they may come up to the mountain. <clears throat> and Moses went down from the mountain to the people, consecrated them, and then they washed their clothing. He said to the people, be ready for the third day. Do not draw near your wives. In the morning of the third day, there was thundering and lightning, a thick cloud on the mountain, and the blast of an exceedingly loud shofar. All okay. the people, okay. Blast of an exceedingly loud shofar. Mm -hmm. So the question here is, what shofar? It's a heavenly shofar or... What we're what, what Again, we're, if everything that we read about leads to Yeshua. Yeshua, okay, we know that upon his next return, right. what are we going to hear? Shofar. Blast of an exceedingly yeah. loud yeah. shofar. Globally. Globally. <laughs> okay, what is he leading up to do? He's leading his people to the base of the mountain so that they can hear his word and receive the ten words. Ten. <laughs> the ten words. Yeah, Put me on the spot. It's called the ten. <laughs> That's how it's oh, referred to. Oh, the ten commandments. I know. <laughs> 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 the interesting part here is, isn't it? Original Moses shofar was the ram's horn after. Right, so this is before, right? This is, so this is a yeah, Yahweh's so far. Well, mm -hmm. who was Moses in himself? I mean, Moses was the guy that the Lord sent to free the people out of pull them out of the mm -hmm. land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So, for all intents and purposes, he was the Messiah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, he was the foreshadowing of the Messiah. Amen. Amen. He freed them from bondage. This is what Passover is all about. Okay, Amen. whereas Yeshua freed us from bondage, all kinds of bondage, the human space. Okay, every single day. That's why when we celebrate Passover, it is so critical that we understand that analogy. When we make that analogy, if you were to sit at the Passover of a traditional Jewish family, there ain't no Yeshua. Yeah. Okay, there is no mention of Messiah Yeshua at all. Okay, when we talk about in Passover, you talk about the Athakomen. Mm -hmm. Somebody mm -hmm. described to me what is Athakomen? That which comes later. <laughs> Something like close. That. Yeah. Okay. It's always to come. come. Yep. Oh. What is the much of physically? What is the Athakomen? Matzah? Matzah. Oh, matzah. Broken in half. Wrapped in linen cloth. Wow. Hidden wow. away. Wow. Yes. And then when found, brought back for a ransom. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Mm. Everything points to him. All right. And so, uh, but Arthur Coleman, you know, growing up in a Jewish home in a, in a Reformed synagogue, um, uh, you know, not, never anybody ever questioned the fact that Alpha Coleman, I thought it was a Hebrew word. No. It's Greek. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. It's Greek. And it means it has come. Oh, sorry. Oh. Where did I hear that? I'm sorry, it means what? He has come. He has come. He has come. Okay. Thank you. Where did I hear that? I heard that from a Baptist minister in Fort Lauderdale. Really? Yeah, you the Baptist. It's what I like about the uh, movie um, Risen. 
and it's from a, a Roman centurion's perspective, and they're trying all the all the uh, uh, Pharisees are trying to persuade him to um, put down what the Lord said he was going to do, and he's trying to to prove that the Lord hasn't risen. Then he sees the Lord. It's such a powerful moment in the movie that he helped the Lord. He was the one that gave the order to put the spear in the side, or, yeah. you know, kind of thing. And he sees the mark. So he knows he's dealing with the real thing. Amen. Amen. And, uh, when, I, uh, as Moses was a deliverer, you mentioned a picture of Savior. He also <clears throat> mentioned look for a prophet and listen to him because mm -hmm. Yeshua became that prophet. The Lord said, okay, out of the mouth of Moses, I will raise up a prophet from amongst thy people. You must listen to him. I will take my word and put it in his mouth and he will teach my people all that I command. Moses said that. Go figure. Okay? Right, right. There's interesting about what he just said about the the Sword in the side, because I just start, I just had a brief discussion with a pastor who said the Jews killed Christ. They said, yeah. "Well, yeah. which is the most ridiculous thing, right?" I mean, we all did, right? What that's book is he reach, right? Yeah, I, that's what I said. It was yeah, something yeah. that he was taught by. And I said, "Here's the other part: nobody killed God, right?" And the right. spear proved it because that gelatinous liquid came out. He was dead before that. That was the proof of it, right? Mm. That no man killed him. He decided. He he gave up his life. Right? And it, exactly. Was that true? I mean, that's, that's no exactly right. It's in fact, he wanted to, he could have called down legions mm -hmm. and prevented the whole thing from happening in the first place. Right. 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 If he wanted to do that, but he was fulfilling the directive from Abba Daddy. Mm -hmm. The next step, I kind of jokingly said to this person, well, if, if the Jews killed Christ, and they're the only ones that are saved, then you don't have a shot, right? That's the truth. Don't be leading us. Amen. Amen. Well, I think that's the problem with the Catholic Church, just like you said, of the, the Orthodox Jews were the oral tradition, but the Catholics only follow the priest and what they tell you. And you know, nobody really opens the book and studies here in this table. And I was trying to explain mm -hmm. that to my grandchildren yesterday. Yeah, but who are, you know, ages 12 and 13, okay, because they're being educated in that church, okay, and and, and I know, beyond a shot of God, I'm thrilled that they're getting biblically educated, but at the same time, there's religion and there's relationship. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what you're that's, that's it. Only uh, what is... But as, but as opposed to my parents in the Catholic Church they grew up in, our grandchildren said yesterday to their grandfather, a grandpa, everything we study, we know that um, Jesus was Jewish. Everything we everything we study, it's constantly we're constantly being reminded. So you know that that has changed at least uh, in some Catholic churches because mm -hmm. my mother believed completely that the Jews killed Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's why she wouldn't let me even look at this man. Yeah. yeah. Not wasn't allowed because the Jews killed him. Well, but if it's you live in Green Bay, it's very Catholic. We are, you know, talking about the Jewish Jesus. It's changing churches. We see it all yeah, the time. They're yeah. changing names of churches mm -hmm. and how people, you know, there's a couple, you know, 500,000 people. And the churches are, pastors are calling us to say, what do you think? of like, point right here, come and look at this study. We're yeah. not the experts, so. It's very yeah, interesting. Uh, I do it constantly. <laughs> it's almost like they're afraid to learn the truth. Yes. Yeah. I hate to say that. Blow their mind. Yeah. 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 You know, it's sparks interest, right? Take it it's back in the... They could even watch it on YouTube after yeah. the fact. They don't even yeah. have to. I think you should go on tour. Even taking it away from, from this, we were talking about this the other day, the general, I don't want to say millennials, but I'm going to say it anyway. But nobody wants to hear the truth. I'm not even talking about this. Nobody wants to hear the truth about anything. They just want it their way and nobody wants to hear the truth. And they're much more willing to listen to each other than, right. than people who are... About any topic. 
Not there's not a church topic. or an organization that teaches those whatever church and doesn't have one of these tables, it's almost not worth it, right? Because you're afraid of having this discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the most important part for yeah. me. For yeah. me, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and, and growing up when I was young, and I, I wanted to um to go out and you know date, but I wasn't allowed to date anybody who wasn't Jewish, mm -hmm. couldn't say the name Jesus because of that problem that was going on. Mm -hmm. it was really and again, if Rabbi David was sitting here, why would he say that that is the case? What what has transpired over the last 1700 years? Persecution. Persecution mm -hmm. of by the, the church. church. To the Jews. Okay, so again, when somebody would say to me when I was a teenager, you know, anything about Jesus, I'm Jewish, don't talk to me about Jesus. We all know he's Catholic. <laughs> it sounds Catholic. so ridiculous to say it out uh, loud. But, but that's what he thought. Yeah. Okay, and it wasn't until I was kneeling at the coffee table, one Dr. Howard Morgan, the two of us were ready to receive Yeshua as Lord and Savior, that he said, You're doing the most Jewish thing that you could possibly do. Mm. Right. That, that you don't stop being Jewish, you're just accepting the fact that he was the Jewish Messiah. Amen. Right. And, and so, again, when people say to me, are you a Christian? My answer is no, I'm Jewish, but I worship the Jewish Messiah. Yes. For sure. Okay. End of story. Oh, I'm sorry. Did somebody have their hand up? Okay. One thing that you might say to folks who say, are you Christian? You can say, Messianic is the same word in a different language. Christian and Messianic are the same word. Precisely. One's Hebrew, one's Greek. Correct. Okay. You're absolutely right. Okay, and again, Christos, okay, or uh, is Messiah, or mm -hmm. uh, it's it's the same language. Amen. Amen. And again, if it weren't for the fact that Paul led the Gentiles of faith for the purposes of doing what? Making the Jews yeah. jealous. Provoking the Jew to jealousy. I got provoked. You were just <laughs> answering my question because somebody actually recently asked me, well, what are the, where are the Gentiles sitting in this? I said, you're supposed to be going after the Jews and take the veil away. Amen. And then, then, that, then that sparks a whole other thing. It right? sparks a whole other thing because <laughs> it's like you're trying to indoctrinate us. Yes. Okay. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, something has to show up first in order for that to happen. And it's called the Ruach HaKodesh. And clearly, when I read the New Covenant for the first time, mm, that film, that veil got lifted. You know, I was just like, like undeniable. And, and I just have to say that. Uh, Never in my life would I ever have thought that this would have happened to this man. It just boggles my mind that um, the path from what you just said to now just. Yeah, because she would, we were dating in college. Uh, um, she would tell me about Jesus. You know, mm. Yeah, but not so, in a heavy duty no, kind no, of way. No, but you just... were talking, you had mentioned it. We had many discussions about it, but it was like, okay. <laughs> but then when you were going to go to rabbinical school, I what was, was I going to do? You know, I'm going to okay. I had all the books. Mm. That's right. Rabbi? Yes, Evangel. Um, it, nowadays, even in spite of the war in Israel, the war between Israel and Gaza, and, and um, Hamas, the, I'm getting reports, hearing reports from Israel that never before have the Jews, the Orthodox Jews, been so open to the message of the gospel. Because they're, yeah, because they're, number one, they're desperate. And number two, they're seeing so much love being shown to them through the, the churches, through the evangelical church and through the Messianic um, believers in Israel. So their their hearts are very softened at this time to the gospel. Not only that, but Orthodox Hasidim 
They're all in black at the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the crews and the, and the pass are becoming part of the IDF. That never happened. Oh, that's before. right. Mm, praise God. Yeah, they're joining the IDF. Okay, in defense. Mm -hmm. Profound. Let's read on. The last Let's... two sentences on the same page. All the people in the camp trembled. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they stood at the lowest part of the mountain. Now the entire Mount Sinai was in smoke because Adonai had descended upon it in fire. The smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace. The whole mountain quaked greatly. When the sound of the shofar grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him with a thunderous sound. And Adonai came down okay, and... Okay, just so you know, if Rabbi David was sitting here, he would tell you that at the top of the mountain, it's still all blackened from that mm, fire. And wow. Smoke. Go on. Mm. You can yeah. actually see it, see it on Google Earth. Really? It's there. It's the black. It's funny. Then Adonai came down. Then Adonai <laughs> came down onto Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain. Adonai called Moses to the top of the mountain, so Moses went up. Then Adonai said to Moses, Go down and warn the people, lest they break through to see Adonai. And many of them died. Even the Kohanim who come near to Adonai must consecrate themselves so that Adonai does not break out against them. Moses said to Adonai, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for you are the one who warned <coughs> us, saying, Set boundaries around the mountains and consecrate it. Then Adonai said to him, go down, you are to come back up, you and Aaron with you. But do not let the Kohanim and the people break through to come up to Adonai, or he will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. Move on. The ten words. Chapter 20. Then God spoke all these words, saying, I am Adonai, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. Do not make for yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or on the earth below or in the water under the earth. Do not bow down to them. Do not let anyone make you serve them. For I, Adonai, your God, am a jealous God, bringing the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving kindness to the thousands of generations of those who love me and keep my mitzvot. My mitzvot, my commandments, go on. You must not take the name of Adonai, your God, in vain. For Adonai will not hold that, hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Remember, Yom Shabbat, to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai, your God. It's the first thing to be consecrated. Amen. Amen. That's why we're sitting here. Go on. In it you shall not do any work, not you, nor your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your cattle, nor the outsider that is within your gates. For in six days on and I made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Thus Adonai blessed Yom Shabbat and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long upon the land which Adonai your God is giving you. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal. Do not be a false witness against your neighbor. Do not covet, covet your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, his manservant, his maidservant, his ox, his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. Okay. There it is. Bingo. All right. So aside from this, what is central to all of Scripture is Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, that we stand up and recite when we face east toward Ireland. <laughs> I can't help but think of the story. Susan's sister's husband, or her brother in law, had a hip surgery yesterday. The hospital that he's in, and he's a cardiologist. How old he is? And he's 91 as of yesterday. <laughs> had hip surgery, but this is up in Rhode Island. And he had it at Miriam Hospital, which is a very Jewish hospital. Mm -hmm. Look at that area. There's, there are many uh, Jewish um, residents. On the phone yesterday, her sister says to her, what's a Shabbat elevator? <laughs> She's very Catholic, but anyway. So she, yeah. she says, I don't understand. What is a Shabbat? Because she knows... 
her her son is married to, uh, an, Orthodox to an Orthodox Jew. And so we yeah. explained to her, she said, you got to be kidding me. So I, anyway, it was just. Does everybody know this? You want to lay the you can't well, touch anything in the lecture. When we were in Jerusalem, I was like, why is this elevator working funny? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 stop that every time. You're not allowed to touch. Well, yeah. we, we stayed at the Citadel of David, which is a very fancy hotel. Uh -huh. We get a whole bank of elevators. Uh -huh. But there's one that was mm -hmm. designated as Shabbat elevator. Yeah. Okay, and all the food and everything was strictly yeah. kosher. Okay, and including on Saturday morning, oh. when we went to breakfast that morning, oh. okay, nothing was warm. Yeah. Everything was cold yeah, because yeah, you can't yeah. turn out a stove. They had know? the most, I love breakfast. They had the most incredible spread every yes. morning. Yeah. So I got, get so excited to get dressed to go down to breakfast. <laughs> and I go down to breakfast on that morning, and it, everything is cold. And I completely forgot, right? And they couldn't hire a Sabbath boy to turn on the show. <laughs> anyway. They do that, right? Yeah. yeah. They do that. yeah but not Can you imagine yeah. hiring someone to turn on the electricity for you? Turn on the I do it for my Orthodox neighbors. Really? Uh, Dishwasher, oh. lights. Yes. Really? Yeah. Yes. You know, all the plates pass over, uh -huh. right? And the cooking utensils, everything had to be separate for that event. Mm -hmm. Again, this is not in the Right. It goes against that. Clinical. Right. Because the command here in the 10 words says not you, your son, your daughter, your you servant, servants, you know, your big servants, your cattle, your stranger yeah, within your cattle. gates. No so wonder they like you so <laughs> much. They get they get a free free person. <laughs> but they don't have to pay you. All right. We're running short on time. Oh, sorry. All right. 18, we are 18. 18. All the people witnessed the thundering and the lightning and the sound of the shofar and the mountain smoking. When the people saw it, they trembled and stood far off. So they said to Moses, you speak, you speak to us and we will listen, mm. but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Mm. So Moses said to the people, do not be afraid for God has come to test you so that his fear may be in you so that you do not sin. The people stood far off while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. Then Adonai said to Moses, say this to B'nai Israel. You yourselves have seen that I have spoken to you from heaven. Do not make gods of silver alongside me and do not make gods of gold for yourselves. You are to make an altar of earth for me. And there you will sacrifice your burnt offerings, your fellowship offerings, your sheep and your cattle. In every place where I cause my name to be mentioned, I will come to you and bless you. When you make for me an altar of stones, do not build it from cut stones. For if you use a tool on it, you will have profaned it. Mm. nor are you to go up to my altar on steps so that your nakedness will not be uncovered while on it. Mm. You think he misses a trick? Nope. Nothing. Okay. Every single detail. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's thinking of you here. If you go up on the steps, okay, you'll be revealing mm -hmm. your nakedness. Right. Okay. Uh, again, you know, we're good. That's, okay. that's Mishpatim. That's oh. the next parasha. Oh. Okay. okay. The judgments is the next week's parasha. Question. Okay. Uh, question, John. It says um, in chapter 20, verse 5, where Adam and I says, I am a jealous God. Hmm. When I was in the church, I was told that that word actually means zealous. That he's zealous for his not the kind of jealousy that we know here on earth. That well, um, this is in fact, well, you can call it what he wants. Mm -hmm. Jealous is what he was. Why? What is he saying? And it's a, it's a good point, John. But what is, why no, is he jealous God? No other gods. What? He said, Thou shalt have no other gods. No other gods. That, right. If that doesn't say jealousy, well, what can I say? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, being jealous and zealous are two different things. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am zealous for the Lord. Amen. Amen. But but he doesn't want me worshiping anybody else except him. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah.
love so good. 